this is Lindy from Love Create Celebrate. Welcome back to our channel where we share all of our DIY and home renovation videos. If you have not subscribed to our channel, please hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any fun DIYs like this canvas art I'm doing today. This wall has been asking for something for ages and for over a year now, I've wanted to put some kind of art up here and haven't had the chance to do it. Thankfully, today I am working with Deco Art. They sponsored this video and they are helping me create some art for this space. The really fun part of this project is that I did these canvases on Instagram and my Instagram audience and Deco Art's Instagram audience voted on their favorite piece and that piece is going to live on this wall. So I'm gonna show you how I made all three canvases. I'm gonna show you how people voted and show you which one's gonna live on here forever. All right, let's get into those video tutorials. This is the wall that I wanted to create some new art for. I love this molding feature wall, but ever since we added this coffee station on the other side of the room, it's felt a little bit unbalanced to me. I think putting a new canvas up will help balance the space. Before I got started, I wanted to take an inventory of the paint colors I had that I could possibly use on my canvas. I got these five colors from DecoArt and I will link to all five of them in the description below. I wanted to see how all of the paint colors looked individually and also how they looked when they were mixed together. To do this, I started by pouring a little bit of each paint color onto a paper plate or anywhere you want to pour paint colors and then just use some paint brushes to brush the colors onto a dollar store canvas that I had. I wanted to sketch out some design ideas and putting all of the colors down let me see how they were going to look beside one another, how they were going to mix to create new colors, and how they were going to complement each other on a canvas. I also had some textured gold paint that I snuck in to try at the very end. I wanted to use really large canvases to fill the entire wall, so I got these ones that are 36 inches by 48 inches that you can buy online or at Michael's. Then I spent some time sketching out different design ideas. I grabbed some pencil crayons that were similar to the colors that I had mixed so I could get an idea of how the colors would look next to one another. And once I had some designs that I was happy with, I went on to starting my first canvas. So I'll start with the most complicated one. This canvas isn't complicated because it's hard to paint. It's complicated because of the measurements I did to make it happen. If you want to make a canvas like mine, the first thing we did was some math to make sure everything would fit inside the center of our canvas and then taped out a perimeter. So if you were doing this canvas, our side perimeters were three inches from the edge and our top and bottom were four and a half inches from the edge. The next step was to mark out a grid so that we would know where all of our tape lines and spaces should go in the design. To do this, we just put our measuring tape along the edge of our taped line, and then we put a mark every inch and a half. The reason we used inch and a half spacing is just because the frog tape we were using is an inch and a half wide, and we thought that was the easiest unit of measurement. Here's a closer view of the grid we made along all the sides of our canvas. This design allowed all of our spaces to be one and a half inches, which is the same thickness as our tape. And it allowed all of our color blocks to be three inches wide, which is the width of two pieces of tape. If you're using the same grid as us, this should allow you to have nine horizontal rows of color with eight spaces in between and seven vertical rows of color with six spaces in between. You can use our canvas design or you can create your own. To put ours onto the canvas, we just followed the grid lines we previously made and went one block at a time marking out where we wanted the tape to sit. You'll notice that we also often put the tape all the way across and then went back and cut a piece off after. We just found it was easier to do this than to cut all those little pieces off right away. 
And now we are finally on to the fun part, which is actually painting the canvas. The only color I mixed for this canvas was I mixed some white with my beige to get a lighter beige color. I actually ended up mixing more white to this after because I found it wasn't quite light enough. To prevent any tape from bleeding through as I painted over the frog tape, the first thing I did was run my finger along all of the tape edges to make sure it was sealed as well as possible. Then when I got my paintbrush, all of my initial strokes were towards the center of the color block. What this did was helped the paint seal the tape and prevented any color from seeping through the edges. And once I had gone all the way around the perimeter, I filled in the center, trying to keep my strokes all in the same direction. And then I painted the rest of the canvas. I did the lighter beige colors first, and then moved on to the darker grays and blacks at the end. Both the gray and the black paint needed a second coat to be nice and thick. Removing the tape on this project was so satisfying. The lines came out beautifully, they were nice and crisp, and I was really happy with how the entire canvas turned out. Okay, so moving on to canvas number two out of three. If you thought that that first canvas might have been a little bit too complicated for you, do not worry because this canvas is going to be much easier and the third one even easier. I started this one by finding the center of my canvas. I'm only going to be painting on the right hand side for now, so when I taped off the center, I taped it on the left hand side of the center marks. Then I found the center of the canvas going at top to bottom and left the tape on the top hand side of that center mark. And then I split the top right quadrant into two and then split the top of that quadrant into two again. I'm starting by painting with this beautiful beige color again. I'm painting the bottom large quadrant and then the second one taped off from the top. For both of these areas, I started with a paintbrush going around the edges, just like I did with the first canvas, and then I painted the large parts inside with a small foam roller that I just picked up at our local dollar store. When those sections were dry, I got some new frog tape and taped off the beige sections. I was really careful to line it up exactly on the paint line because I didn't want any of the white canvas showing through after I lifted the tape. Then I painted the other two sections on that side of my canvas with this beautiful grey colour from DecoArt. This is another grey acrylic paint but it's called Warm Grey and it really complements the beige color I've already used. I thought they looked beautiful beside one another. After two coats of that gray paint, I peeled off the tape. Look at how nice and crisp those lines are. I was so happy about it. And then I started taping off the next sections of my canvas. I started by taping off a couple of lines I wanted to go all the way across the canvas. The bottom stripe will be three inches wide, then the space will be an inch and a half, and the top stripe will be an inch and a half. And finally I taped off this top section. I wanted it to be the same width as the grey rectangle across from it, so I had to do a little bit of measuring to make sure that all of my spaces were going to be equal, and then I used one inch frog tape to mark out the spaces. So I had even one inch spaces throughout that square. Then I painted all of those sections black to contrast the other colors in the canvas. And then my favorite part is peeling back that tape again and seeing how beautiful the lines look and the finished product. 
and then my last canvas is the easiest one there's no tape involved no other materials just paint and some paint brushes I'm starting by mixing a couple colors because I want to make a nice deep bluey green so that it will nicely blend with the wall that this canvas is going to go on Using the color I just mixed and an angle wall painting brush, I'm just going to lightly stroke the canvas with the acrylic paint. I started in the top right hand corner and slowly moved towards the bottom left hand corner of the canvas. Next, I got a smaller paintbrush, just about an inch wide, and some black paint. I wanted to add some dimension to the piece by adding some small black strokes in beside the larger strokes that I had already made. I used the thin side of the paintbrush to lightly brush these strokes on anywhere that I thought could use a little more depth in the painting. And then my final step was to take this gold textured paint from Deco Art and lightly put a little bit of gold beside the brush strokes that I had already done. Here's a little closer view of exactly what I did with that gold paint, just light strokes on the edge of the other paint colors. The gold adds a beautiful shine to the canvas. And since this canvas sits right beside a big open window, I thought it'd be really nice to have a bright metallic color in there that would catch the light. Here are the three canvases when they were finished. Myself and DecoArt both presented them to our Instagram audiences to vote on their favorites, and you guys did not disappoint in the voting. So in the end, I loved all three canvases. I thought all three of them complemented this space in different ways, and honestly, I would use any of them in my home. But with 50% of the vote from you guys, canvas number one was our winner and is going to be staying in this dining room for a while. Thank you so much for watching. What do you guys think of the one that they chose? Let me know your favorite in the comments below. I'd love to hear which one you would have voted for as well. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments. And as always, hit that bell so you can be notified of more great DIY and home renovation videos. Thanks for watching.